Yo, what's happening? Listen, we're going to look at the greatest thing that has ever happened in human history. What is it? The resurrection. Let's go. Kinfolk, how are you? It is a pleasure to be with you today. We are about to begin our study on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so I have this opportunity to be with you today, and I don't want to take it lightly. So let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, the object of today's study is to complete the brief survey of the ministry of Jesus. We, If you haven't reviewed and uh, gone over the first two weeks, uh, we talk about his divine sonship, his divine messiahship in week one, his life. We talk about his atoning death in week two. And I hope you got a chance to listen to that video, to watch the video. Uh, and then today we're going to talk about his physical body, uh, the resurrection uh, of the dead. And so it, your homework was to read Mark 6 through 10. And if you have any questions about those, you can email me at pt at resurrectionhouston.org. I'd be glad to respond to you. Often in talking about the resurrection, uh, I like to start off with this preface. Uh, and I got it from a, 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 a theologian by the name of N.T. Wright, that the resurrection isn't life after death, but the resurrection is life after life after death. Uh, man, I, I can't wait for us to unpack that uh, because, man, when we talk about the resurrection of the dead, we talk about the central fact of the faith. And the first thing I want to point out is that uh, resurrection was not just something that happened. It was the singular event in history never had happened before. Uh, we'd had people revived from the dead. We'd had people translated to heaven. We'd had people... Uh, you know, we, we talk about uh, the, the, the life after death and people being uh, ghouls or ghosts or whatever you may call it. But here, this is the first time in human history that we've had a man come back from the dead and live on forever in bodily form. And so it was predicted. And I want to show us this real quick here in Mark chapter 10, verse 32 through 34. So, so let's see the prediction of the resurrection in Mark chapter 10, verse 32 through 34. It reads like this. And they were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them. And they were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. And taking the twelve again, he began to tell them what was happening to him, saying, See, we are going to Jerusalem and the son of man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the scribes and they will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles and they will mock him and spit on him and flog him and kill him. And he is the kicker. And after three days, he will rise. We see his resurrection being predicted uh, days before his death, he's letting them know that not only will he die and not only will he die at the hands uh, of his people and die at the hands of the Gentiles, but that they will mock him. They will spit him, spit on him, flog him, and they will kill him. But three days later, he will rise from the dead. And so he's letting them know. This is going to happen. This resurrection is predicted. So I want us to see that it's predicted and foretold. Second thing we're going to see is this resurrection predicted. And so we're going to look at Mark chapter 16 and we're going to look at verses one through eight. And I'm reading from the English Standard Version of the Bible again. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb and they were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looked up and they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, do not be alarmed. 
you seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place they had laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he's going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb for trembling and astonishment had seized him. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. And and, and here uh, in this passage, we see one of 10 different accounts of the resurrection of Jesus. So Mark's account of the resurrection is one of the briefest in the Bible. There are 10 other accounts of Jesus in his resurrection. And in those accounts, they're talking about the fact that he's in bodily form. Like, yo, this Jesus not only not only walks through walls, but he can eat meals and he invites his disciples to touch him. And so the facts of the resurrection are that this man, Jesus, was raised from the dead as a man, not a ghost, living to never die again, and that he invited, according to the account, his people to touch him and to see that he is real. So the next thing we want to do is look at the resurrection in its central meaning. And as a child, have you ever, did you ever try to imagine what the world would be like without you, you know, if you died. Um, and, you know, people throughout all eternity have commented and thought about what is life after death and what happens after death. Is there heaven or hell? Uh, and as one writer expresses it, death itself is nothing but this we fear to be we know not what we know not where and in the bible there are answers to these questions they're found in the resurrection of jesus christ and we're going to see uh that all people will be raised all people will then be judged and that the risen jesus will be the judge on that day these are all central facts but i want to go to first corinthians chapter 15 where I think is the paramount example of the resurrection of the dead, if you will. And so, uh, again, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And so he there here he says, Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and which you stand, and by which you're being saved, if you hold fast to this, unless you believed in, in vain. For I delivered to you of what's in first importance. What is important that he told them for, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures and then here and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the 12 and then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time this resurrection wasn't a private resurrection uh, over 500 people saw this man uh, and you know if these 500 people came to you like the UFO sightings and said, okay, look, uh, one guy says he saw him. And then another guy at another time says he saw him. Then another person at another time says that he saw him. If they were to say this to you, right? You'd be like, well, okay, I hear all these different accounts, but is it true? But what if the 500 people came to you at one time and said we all saw and witnessed this one event that jesus was raised we saw him uh in his bodily form after his death and we believe that he's the son of god who has been uh, who who has experienced resurrection you're gonna look at it a little differently you're gonna be like oh so this isn't just people coming with events after event after event this is 500 people at one time coming to let me know that jesus was raised so then he would go on in in this in this passage because first corinthians 15 deals with the importance of the resurrection and the fact that it is the middle of our faith because he'll go on to say in verse 12 and I'm still in 1 Corinthians 15. He says, now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, 
how can you say some of you say that there's no resurrection of the dead but if there's no resurrection of the dead then not even christ has been raised and if christ has not been raised then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain he literally says man that the middle of what we believe is the resurrection and we are even found to be misrepresenting god because we testified about god that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise. If it is true that the dead are not raised, that God is saying that he raised him from the dead. And if he didn't raise him from the dead, that makes God a liar. And if God's a liar, that means our faith is, in, is futile. And if, for if the dead are not even raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised in verse 17, your faith is futile and you're still in your sins. So the resurrection is crucial and critical to us understanding and knowing and believing it is proof that our sins have been forgiven because without a risen Jesus, how do we know that somebody who says they died for us, that that sacrifice was acceptable to the God that sacrificed them? John McCain, I uh, used to say this all the time. John McCain could tell you that he came and died for you. And, but John McCain isn't here with us anymore to let you know that it, that it, that it happened that it was true that that it, it it took that god was pleased with it you don't know right so then he goes on to say and i want to talk to you about the resurrection body and that's in verse 35 he says but someone will ask how are the dead raised with what kind of body do they come you foolish person what you sow does not come to life unless it dies and what you sow is not the body that is to be but a bare kernel perhaps of wheat or of some other grain but god gives it as a body as he has chosen and to each kind of seed its own body for not all flesh is the same but there is one kind for humans another for animals another for birds another for fish the heavenly bodies uh, and earthly bodies but the glory of the heavenly is of one kind and the glory of the earthly is of another he he's, goes on to describe that the resurrection body is a body it may be different from the body that you have but it is no less a body this isn't ghosts that will raise him from the dead these are people in their flesh in their blood uh, so then verse 42, he'll go on to say, so it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. So these verses have kind of tried to illustrate using an example of planting and sowing. So uh, for those of you who ever had fifth grade, uh, I don't know what it's called, biology or is it biology? Anyway, it's science. And so you, you, in science, you got to learn how to plant uh, a bean seed. At least I did. And so we would take these little old bean seeds. We get these cups. We put soil in them, put water in them. We bury the seed way down in there, right? And so, and then 30 days later, it's still the bean, but it's still the bean mass and the bean, the bean we put in there. But what comes out is this beautiful plant like thing that is more glorious than what got put in, which is a little bean. And that is his point. He says that the body will be placed into the ground and, but what comes out of the ground is still the body but it is in more, a more glorious form than when it is put in he's saying our resur the resurrection body of jesus but our resurrection body is in the same way that the res that a resurrection is life after life after death we're not going to heaven to be ghosts we're going to be raised from the dead as men and as women in our bodies but more glorious than what god put in and so, man, we 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 see this resurrection and we see that it is so vital that Jesus guarantees through his resurrection that we will be resurrected. And that this is part of the gospel message that Jesus has been raised from the dead as a physical body in bodily form. And as a result of that, those of us who place faith in Jesus will not only be forgiven of our sins, 
but the death order on our bodies will be rescinded and we will be raised to new life. So we see that resurrection is not life after death, like ghosts or people being raised as ghosts or, or, or uh, the soul separating from the body, but, the resur- but resurrection is bodily resurrection. It's life after life after death. And it is a central part of our faith. Jesus was raised from the dead. And as a result of that, he being the first of a new creation, we are entering into the manifestation of this new thing that God is doing, starting with Jesus. And it's going to spread to all of our bodies, those of us who place faith in Jesus. And so when we say the good news, we say the good news is Jesus lived, he died, he rose again. Uh, so that we might have life and life more abundantly in the kingdom that Jesus is ruling. So I can't wait to talk to you again. What we would like for you to do is to read your homework. And your homework for the next week is Mark chapter 11 through 16. Uh, Read that in full. Bring any questions you may have or any questions you may have, you can send them to PT at ResurrectionHouston.org or place them in these comments. Can't wait to talk to you. Talk with you soon. All right. Peace.